Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to be reviewing the new Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. This one came out on the Urban Decay website around a week or so ago. I'm definitely keeping an eye out to see when it comes to Sephora and Ulta and it's been a while since Urban Decay released an eyeshadow palette, especially one that looked this interesting to me. So of course I had to get it and we are going to swatch it and create some looks in today's video if you guys are excited for it don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave and let's just go ahead and get started the last palette I remember Urban Decay coming out with was I believe in the summer fall last year and it was the naked cyber palette that palette did not pique my interest at all whatsoever so i ended up fully skipping it and i was actually really excited when i saw the urban decay wild greens palette announced because it's not a naked palette this is what it looks like right here it has squared little pans rather than the rectangular ones it comes with a cardboard packaging rather than the hard plastic one it retails for 40 $44 so a little cheaper than the naked palettes go for and it has this really beautiful springy color story they're saying the wild greens eyeshadow palette promises the high impact color payoff you love and the clean vegan formula you crave experiment with 12 nature inspired earthy neutrals and wild greens in a creamy blendable eyeshadow the palette has 12 all new California inspired shades a versatile mix of greens and and earthy neutrals in shimmers, mattes, and metallics, wildly pigmented vegan formula, maximum payoff, ultra blendable with a hit of avocado oil. Let's go ahead and get into the swatches. Okay, take a look right here at the beautiful swatches. This palette is super springy. The shimmers actually look really beautiful. I feel like most of the mattes don't have that much intensity to them. So if you have a dark or deep complexion, I don't know that this would be the ideal palette for you because a lot of the mattes do look on the lighter side unfortunately but i do like some of the more pastel colors a lot for the springtime i didn't do life swatches and i might have gone over some of the lighter shades twice but overall everything swatched really nicely i was kind of surprised just now when i read that they're all new shades and all new formulas because for some reason i remember them having a color called lofi or lofi the same way this one right here is named from years ago but maybe they changed the formula or the color is slightly different i'm not sure because i don't actually remember what lofi used to look like i just remember that the name already existed as far as the rest of the shades in here i didn't really get that vibe from any others and well let's just go for some eye looks because i am dying to try this formula and the shades swatched really beautifully so let's just see <laughs> i got you guys a little closer to do an eye look I don't know what he's doing here. He definitely was not invited to the party, but it is what it is. I'm going to start with my refer number 15 brush and I pulled my hair out of my face and we are going into the color Lofi, Lofi, right here. And this is of course going to be used as our transition shade. So I'm just going to load my brush and do windshield wiper motions and build it up all over the crease. This shade is really light, but it is building up to be a nice transition shade. With the refer number one, I'm grabbing the color Super Greens. And I'm going to, yes, I'm going to place it on the inner half of my crease, blend it into our transition color. This one's a bit more pigmented. These shades are, I would say, on the powdery side. And same thing over here, of course. I like this so far. I'm going to use the color Kickback also with the refer number one. And I'm going to intensify the outer corner of my eye. Start blending it into the crease with little circles right back here. So first I'm tapping it on the outer corner of the eyelid. And then little circles to blend it into the crease. Now I will say, even though I feel like these are a little bit more on the powdery side, we have had no fallout so far which is amazing for the center of the eye i'm not sure if i want to go for like a green shimmer or for like an orange shimmer type of a shade what do you guys think i think i'm going to go for the green shimmer and with my finger i'm just going to press it all over the center of the eyelid yeah i like the way this came out that's cute 
For the inner corner, I'm going to grab the color Chill with the rougher number 28, put it on the inner corner and blend it in a little bit. I don't want to lose my super green, so I'm going to add it back using a rougher number 26. Okay, and I'm done with the top of the eye. This looks really cute. I'm going to do a little bit underneath, so I'm using Kickback on a rougher number 26 and blending it underneath my lower lashes. A little bit of our transition shade on a rougher number 14 to diffuse the under eye. Natasha Denona brown eyeliner. And here is the final first look without mascara. Let me go ahead and put on some mascara and I'll be right back to show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm back with mascara on and this is what it looks like. I absolutely love the way that this one came out. I feel like my favorite types of green eyeshadow looks are like this one. I'm going to put on this little pair of Ardell Eco lashes. Um, even this right here is cardboard, no plastic, so I love that. Let's see what these do. I chose super natural looking lashes. Can you even tell the difference? I have them on this side. Okay, lashes applied just for a little bit more volume and this right here is the final first look. Love it. Let's begin look number two and I'm going to start with the color earth side and I'm going to distribute it across the crease of my eye just back and forth with a big fluffy brush. Doing some windshield wiper motions right here, back and forth. This pastel green color is so pretty. I love it. So I'm just going to build it up to the intensity that I want. And to darken it up, I'm going to use the color Earth Side on a rougher number one. This is like a taupey gray type of a shade. And I'm just going to build it into that green shade ever so slightly. Darkening up the outer half of the crease. And I'm going to further intensify with a little bit of kale. So I'm just patting it right on the outer corner of my eyelid. And I'm still using that rougher number one brush. Going back with the big fluffy brush in case I need to further blend anything up here. And for the center of the eyelid, I'm going to use the color Fuzz. And I'm applying it with my finger right in the center of the eyelid here. Fuzz is like a really pretty duochrome type of a shade. So it has some greens in it, but it also has some of the warmer tones that the palette has and then with a flat brush i'm grabbing the color high vibe and i'm going to blend it on the inner third of my eyelid right here just tapping it in with my refer number 28 brush a little bit more fuzz i want these two colors to blend nicely into one another and for the inner corner, the color Chill. And I'm going to bring it in right up here. Take a look right there. That is so pretty, in my opinion. Let's do the under eyes next. Chanel eyeliner in number 99. This eyeliner has greenish vibes. And I'm just going to run a brush through the edge and smudge it. I'm going to run a little bit of Kill right over it with the tip of my refer number 26 brush and finish it off with super greens right under my eye. Lastly, a touch of kickback on the outer half of the under eye here, just to darken things up a little bit. Okay, so this is the finished second look. This is how things are looking before mascara. Let me go ahead and do a little bit of mascara, maybe some lashes, and I'll be right back to show you the final second look. Take a look right here. This is look number two with mascara on. I love the soft green and peachy tones of this look so much. And that duochrome shimmer in the center of the eyelid is so beautiful to me. I added a magnetic liner and half lashes and this is the final second look right here. I love how bright it is. Again, I love that combination of peach and light green a lot. Let's move on to look number three. Okay, let's begin look number three with the lo-fi transition shade. And I'm using a refer number, I believe, 27. Yes, a refer number 27 brush to blend the crease. And just back and forth, blend that color. Then with my refer number one and the color turmeric, I'm going to darken things up. Starting on the inner corner of the eye, just blending it upwards. Same thing back here. Tapping it on the outer corner first, and now I'm going to start blending it into the crease. Back and forth. I want to intensify things further with the color Stash, and so I'm going to use a rougher number 14 brush, 
and tap it on the outermost corner of the eye, blend it upwards a bit. I'm using a refer number 14 because it's a lot thinner of a blending brush and so I can be a little bit more precise with where I place and blend the color. And same thing on the inner corner right here, just darkening up things ever so slightly. I think this is dark enough, but if it's not, then we'll just come back with some more kickback later. I just need it to be either darker or just as intense as the color starch right here. And so with my refer number 28, I'm going to place it right here. Okay, maybe I'm going to use my finger instead of the brush. Yeah, this is working better. Right here. And right here, just leaving a space in the middle. Oh, the color stash is not very good. Okay, back with the brush, I'm trying to place it where I want it. And then more kickback to intensify the outer corner. We did end up needing a little bit more depth back here. And the inner corner. And in the center of the eyelid, the color prickly. And with my finger, I'm going to tap it in place. Just tapping it with my finger right here. Let me take care of this fallout. A little bit more stash with my finger on the edges of prickly. And just like that, even though this is a halo eye, this might be my least favorite look I've done today. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Let me do the inner corner and the under eyes. I'm going to start with the color Kickback on a refer number 26 brush to darken up the lower lash line. And with my refer number 14 and the color Lo-Fi, I'm going to smoke that out. Okay, I went ahead and applied a brown Natasha Denona eyeliner to my waterline. And once again, Chill is going to be my inner corner color. Okay, and so this right here is the final third look. Like I said, this is the one that I like the least from what I've created, but I wanted to incorporate the rest of the colors that I hadn't used. Um, it's a little grungy. Maybe some of you will like it a little better, but I definitely preferred the first couple of looks. At the end of the video, I'll tell you which one was my favorite. Let me put on some mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, take a look right here. This is the third look with mascara on. I'm using the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. I think after I applied the mascara, I like it a lot better than before, for sure. Okay, I added a magnetic eyeliner and some magnetic half lashes. I will have them linked below. And this right here is the final third look with this palette. I also just realized that my lighting settings were a little off. So this looks much brighter than before. And also now that it looks brighter, I like it better. <laughs> I was sort of showing you in the dark earlier so yeah okay so this is the final third look with some half falsies okay so let me give you guys my final thoughts on the new urban decay wild greens eyeshadow palette i feel like it's a cute palette i do really like the color story this urban decay eyeshadow formula i would describe as a little bit more powdery rather than pigmented it takes building up to get the shadows to look the level of intensity that you want them however because they are powderier shades they do blend out really easily so if you're a beginner this might be a palette that you're really comfortable with because you can build up the shades little by little rather than eyeshadows that are pigmented right away and that you might not have the patience to blend out. With this type of packaging that they did, they definitely saved themselves a mirror. So if a mirror is very important to you, this one does not have one. As far as price versus what you get for $44, I do think that this palette is worth it. I definitely had a lot of fun playing with the different shades and creating the eye looks. I think it has a really lovely color story, perfect for the spring and summertime. I love the tones of green that they chose to put in this palette. They're not as vibrant and so I myself feel a little bit more comfortable wearing these toned down green shades rather than like the very intense type of greens. Overall, I do recommend this palette, but if you're someone who is used to the Natasha Denona Pat McGrath types of formulas and know that this formula is very different. You're going to have to do a lot more building up. The shades are not as pigmented right away. However, I do think that you can still create really beautiful looks with this one. And if this is a color story that you are into, then I don't see why not. Definitely go for it. 
Okay, so this is all I have for you guys today. If you liked the video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. Let me know which look was your favorite one down in the comment section below. I personally really love this one. It was unexpectedly beautiful and I love how it's colorful but very soft and elegant all at the same time. So this is my vote right here. If you're new to my channel or you haven't subscribed yet, it would mean the world to me if you just hit that red subscribe button and join the family. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye!